Morning guys, it is 6 a.m. on a Friday morning here in the Frank Church wilderness, and we're gonna go play in the backcountry. I'm Trent Palmer, I fly drones for a living and bush planes for fun. Follow along as I journey off the beaten path of aviation. say I bet you it's going to be gnarly. Yeah, I don't like that at all. I'm going to turn around here. I just don't know this drain as well enough to be doing it kind of blind. Kind of blind? All right, goes making a left 180. I'm Turner. Everyone's cool turning around in here? Yeah. Yeah, no, we turned around that corner and I was not happy. All right, I, I got Jason in sight. Turn you behind me. I am. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Visibility is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's brutal. Early morning up here is bad sometimes. So did you guys get the rundown from Luke like I did on where to land at his place? I heard something about a ditch, but if you want to give everyone the briefing, that'd be great. Well, he has one of those roller sprinklers that, you know, looks like it's on wagon wheels, and that runs perfectly parallel to it, and I couldn't, I, I don't remember if it was on the left or right side, but it sounds like it's pretty clear, and you want to land just right at the start of that roller sprinkler. Okay, so the roller sprinkler rolls parallel to the runway. Correct, like you'll land with the pipe. Got it. So to my understanding, you'd be on, a, you'd be on final right now. And he says he has horses, that's the deal? Yeah, I see him off to the left. Yeah, I do too, just trying to get a uh, gauge of how fast they could move into the runway. I'm definitely not seeing the little um, bump he was talking about. Oh, I see, right at the start of the pivot. I'm slowing way up, obviously. Yeah, I didn't know that. I kind of overtaken you on your right. Is an elk in the runway? Oh yeah, look at that guy. I'm turning left, I kind of cut you off there. Trent, you feel free to take it first. I'm gonna land it, like you're saying, just past the start of the pivot, because I think that's the ditch he's talking about. Yeah, it is. And uh, I'm doing the same. And it looks like that elk is off now, so uh, I'm gonna just hope it is, because there's no going around on that one. Yeah, I don't see the elk, it's those horse right at the beginning too, as long as they don't spook and go the wrong way. Yeah, agreed. Um, I'm gonna give you plenty, plenty of spacing, so you just go ahead and take that. You gonna roll it all the way up to the end? Yeah, I believe so, but I, it sucks because I don't know what's up there, but yeah, I'm gonna try to keep it rolling. If you, I'll make a really long final, you do what you gotta do. I'll do what I gotta do. Luke claims this is the smoothest strip in the backcountry. I'll, uh, I'll take your report. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give you all. Kind of steep, not too bad. It is uh, very nicely smooth. I don't know if it's the smoothest, but it's pretty smooth. You land just past the pivot point? Yeah, or just before it. You kind of just want to pass where that first house is. There's a divot that you'll see, but yeah, it's freaking like a mile long, so don't worry about it. Sweet. And I'm going to shut off up here and push back as much as I can. I hope you guys have parking brakes, though. All right, we just landed at Luke, who is Jeff's neighbor's place, and this is amazing. Basically, he's got, I don't forget how many acres, but 
Uh, it's fourth generation that he's been ranching out here, completely isolated off the grid. Morning. Morning. Hey. Yeah. This place is beautiful. I told you. <laughs> So I'm gonna steal some fuel from Joe because he's got a little too much. I have a little too little. Tankering. Yeah, but this place is rad. You should. So mail plane comes in. Otherwise, private strip don't come unless you know Luke, obviously. Yeah. But you got that. It's smooth. You aren't oh, yeah. kidding. Yeah. Yeah, it's smoother anyway. So oh, yeah. the smoothest backer. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it is. What wing am I pulling from? <laughs> Either one. They're both full. Okay. You made a mystery out of love. Yeah, so Luke is a fourth generation rancher or homesteader or whatever you'd call it out here. This is like kind of that iconic American dream to many, but I do have crazy respect for the lifestyle out here that if something breaks, you're fixing it. You can't just call someone and then like when we see ants at Jeff's house, it's like, what are you gonna do, call the exterminator? You just deal with it. This guy's pretty, buddy. Yeah. Super cool. Dude, this is insane. View from his front porch. I love the fact that the mail plane comes out here. So I guess they're on one of the, like, the only air mail routes left in the United States. So they can, you know, order goods and, and get regular mail once a week by a 206 that flies in here. All right, now I'm winded. This runway is a lot steeper than it looked, huh? <laughs> I'm winded, man. <laughs> but uh, I guess he's, Luke's been dragging in a strip up on the top of this mountain, so we're gonna go buzz that, head up Big Creek. I don't even know how to have this talk. Um, Bronson's leaving. There are currently two of us left here at uh, Jeff's place. There's a, I don't, again, I don't know how to even address this. Um, we had a little issue this morning, um, going into a strip, basically a rough landing with a go around, touched a rock and, and damaged landing gear. I was able to fly away from it. We went over to McCall, everyone's fine. But a friend of mine did bend some metal and it was a, an off morning, I should say. So there are times when there's breaks in these videos and that there's certain stuff that I can't show you guys because it's just not a respectful thing to do to my friends. So you guys know that I'm a, I'm an open book and I, I'm not someone that hides stuff and I, I'm very open with what happens to me and my experiences. But unfortunately when, when issues happen to other people in their aircraft, that is not my story to tell. So with the type of flying we do, um, obviously in unimproved runways and strips and sometimes completely off field, there's just variables that you can't always nail down. And that's an accepted risk that all of us pilots have made prior to going in there. And we're all adults and we can all do a self-assessment of what we're capable of. Much like someone that gets on a dirt bike and chooses to get on a dirt bike track. Now, obviously you can get on a dirt bike and ride back and forth down this runway all day and I don't think you'll ever hurt yourself. But if you go jump on a track and you ride hard, at some point there's a good chance that you're gonna fall. Unfortunately, same thing happens with airplanes. And some of the time the, the little mistakes end up being some bent metal. Uh, luckily, a large majority of the time, because we're so low energy and we're always going so slow when it happens, no one's normally hurt. But I would be lying to you guys if I told you that none of my friends have wrecked airplanes when I was around. So anyway, I don't know where I'm going with this. To my buddy, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, man. That was not a fun morning. You'll rebuild. Glad you are okay. You did an awesome job, all things considered. But anyway, so one of the other buddies uh, had a Zoom meeting. I think he's gonna come back out here. We were hoping Ty was gonna catch up with us and then we're gonna jump in uh, Jeff's jet boat since it's already like 105 out and it's 
not smooth air up there. It's pretty rough. So jump in the jet boat, go check out this ranch. That's a private ranch down the way and enjoy the river. Bronson. 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 Cool. Trent. Trent. Yeah, nice, nice to meet you. Yeah. Whoa. Big, got all the granite in Everything. on a boat? Yep. <laughs> boat or helicopter? Boat or helicopter? How about that fridge? That is ridiculous. Sub zero. <laughs> kind of looks like my house, but you know, 18 times bigger. It's a three handed unit right there. You got two hands on this side, and you got your buddy on the danger end. Everything seems I actually want to hear about the mail plane. So you're actually on a mail route. Yep. The only airplane mail route in the lower 48 states we're on. Uh, this is Shep Ranch. So we're on the same mail route. You can call the store, email the store by uh, satellite. Give them the list of what you want. They'll take it to, to the airport and the mail plane will pick it up. And for like between 45 and 70 cents a pound, they will fly it in and bring it with your mail. For these backcountry places, pretty cool. And you guys actually, that's how you get your mail. That's how you get milk. And groceries if you want. Groceries, gas, whatever you want. Beer is a little expensive. Tequila is much cheaper by the pound. Yeah. This is their airstrip. This is their airmail box. So rad. <laughs> Don't eat the berries, Jeff. Woo. I go good in a drink. This strip is way longer than it looks because there's this hump here and it goes like another, I mean, crap, that's 1,500 feet right there or more. And when the static bones tape hisses and the beat breaks through your bones, don't try to get your dial tone. It's lo fi on the line, gonna take you home. Now the others are coming. 